This is the story of a businessman who often lets opportunity pass him by. A man whose horizon is limited. Limited by habit. By the daily routine of 25 years service to his friends and neighbors. Old friends, mostly, who still like to trade with Bill Jackson, even though service might be a little better or prices a little lower somewhere else. Yes, Bill, like a lot of folks, is quite content with the small circle of his own horizon. But now, as we tune in to Mrs. Jackson, something tells us that Bill's horizon is about to expand. Hello. Yes? But this is Jackson. Who? Alan Beckham, the travel agent. Yes. About the reservations for your trip, Mrs. Jackson. We got everything completed this morning. Steamship tickets, hotel arrangements. It's a real bargain for a fine vacation. I know you'll enjoy it. Yes, you sail on the 29th. Can you come in for the tickets? Yes, Mr. Beckham. Yes, I'll have my husband pick up the tickets on his way home for lunch. He's down at the service station now. Down a quart, Judge. Quart and a half, maybe. Let her go. I'll wait till I change her again. Okay. Jackson's SO Service. Fred Rodman speaking. Oh, yes. Hello, Miss Jackson. Well, he's out at the island with uh, Judge Bailey. I'll call him. Oh, sure. Be glad to tell him. Tickets at Beckham's. Uh-huh. No, he'll be here for a while yet, I guess. The S.O. salesman's waiting to see him. Okay, Miss Jackson. You're welcome. Nothing doing, I told him. Don't count me in on any committees. Once they get you in on those town committees, you got no time left for anything. Well, we better get a few of you practical businessmen on some of these planning committees. Or in another ten years, you and I won't know this town. You hardly know it now. It's growing too fast. You could handle a committee job in the time you waste fishing. Time I waste? Ha! Uh. You could catch anything bigger than a minnow, it wouldn't be so bad. Listen, just because you've been lucky enough to beat me out of the club trophy two years in a row, lucky, he says. And if you fill up these displays here, you won't have much stock left over. I'll put down what I think you need and check it with Mr. Jackson. Here he comes now. Sorry to keep you waiting, Charlie. Got plenty of time. Just going over the stock. Mm -hmm. Ms. Jackson just called. Note for you here on the desk. Oh? Uh -huh. I'll catch it. Pick up tickets from Beckham. Uh-oh. Travel agent. Oh, boy. Trouble? Oh, not exactly. Last fall, I let my wife talk me into planning a trip. West Indies. West Indies? Wow, how rich can you get in this business? Well, Mary's been saving up for years. It's our 25th anniversary. Well, congratulations. Thanks, Charlie. I kind of hate to spend all that money right now when business is falling off. Well, we'll have to pep things up a little around here. Just been checking over what you need. Now, here are the tires and tubes. You ought to get in a few more of each of these. And these batteries. And you'll need a lot of motor oil with spring changeover coming up. Why should we load up with all that motor oil? We didn't sell half that much oil this time last year. I don't know, but I think we can sell it, boss. <laughs> I hope you're right. Okay, you'll be boss here while I'm away. It'll be up to you. That oil better be gone when I get back. Well, do the best we can. You've got a good man, Bill. He does a good selling job. Yeah, hard to find men like Fred. If I didn't have him, I couldn't get away at all. Larry's only been here a few weeks, and Hank, the new boy, we're just breaking in. Well, as long as you stay closed nights and Sundays, the three of them can manage. But, Bill, your business shouldn't be slowing down. It ought to be growing. I think your short hours is one of the reasons. This is a good location. Neighborhood well built up and still growing. Almost every family owns one car at least. You can get your share of transient traffic, too. Overall, business is good. Auto manufacturers predict more than five and a half million new cars will be sold in 1955. 
Total gasoline volume is growing everywhere. It's growing right in this area. So if you're competitive, your business should be growing. Competitive? Look, Charlie, if I would cut my margin, my gross would go down, which would bring my cost per gallon up. Now, wait, Bill. Did I say anything about margin? No, but... You can be competitive a lot of ways. One way is in longer hours of operation. Yes, but I You're satisfied with your SO franchise, aren't you? I've been selling SO for almost 25 years. Then you know what the SO sign means to your business. SO has spent millions of dollars to build public confidence in the SO identification sign and in SO dealers as reliable, independent businessmen. Millions more on research and refining to give you the very best quality products on the market. As long as customers are free to choose where they'll buy and are satisfied with the price, you have the competitive advantage of years of public confidence in your sign and your products. But when you yourself limit your hours of operation, when you lock up your products and walk away with the key, when you close your doors to the business while other stations stay open, and when you turn off your identification sign while your competitor signs are still lighted up, or when you fail to open your doors to the motorist who drives on Sunday, you leave customers no choice. They have to buy somewhere else. They're exposed to competition. And some of them just won't come back. And if I do stay open, I'll need more help. And it'll cost me more to do business. So I lose a few customers. A few? Bill, any dealer that loses customers, even as few as one or two a month without replacing them, is slowly liquidating his business. Your gallonage has been dropping. Yeah, a little. But the total gallonage for this area has gone up a lot. Your competitors, including other SO dealers, must be getting it, right? Yeah, I suppose so. I guess they need a little help out there. Well, think about this, Bill. And when you get back, let's talk some more about it. Sure thing. Bill, that you? Yep, it's me. Get the tickets? No. I, uh, I didn't have time. Didn't have time? Bill, we've been planning this trip since last fall. But it seems to me you're acting pretty cool about it lately. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. I mean, when we first talked about it, I thought it was a swell idea. After all, we didn't get any vacation last summer. Last summer? Why, Bill, you and I haven't had a real vacation by ourselves together since, since little Mary was born. And here I am, a grandmother. Last summer, indeed. Don't you want to go? Oh, of course I do. But you have to be practical. This trip's going to cost a lot of money. Well, I've scrimped and saved so we'll have the money. And this is one time that we're going to do as we've planned. It's always the same. You just can't imagine that station getting on without you. Oh, Fred can take care of the station. I just thought if we could put it off a while. A put it while. off? Put it off? William, you can do what you want to. I'm sailing, and on the 29th. sure hated to leave. You'd think he was going to jail instead of on a pleasure cruise. <laughs> well, he's been working so steady, it's hard to break the habit. Yeah? I know how he felt. I don't like to loaf myself. Get more fun out of working. You know, I'd get a big kick out of it if we could turn over most of that stuff before the boss gets back. So would I. But you'll have to get in a lot more customers to do it. Get them in, yeah. How? Lots of ways. One of my dealers over in Postville worked out a new customer campaign that got him in a lot of new business. 
He used almost everything in the book. Special displays, giveaways, handbills, direct mail to everyone in his part of town, telephone solicitation, newspaper ads, even some commercials on the local radio stations. Well, gosh, he must have spent quite a lot of money. Not so much, and it really paid off. Here's a list of everything he used and just what it cost him. Sure be fun to go fishing in that thing. Some difference from fly casting back home, huh? Mm. Mister, we need another couple to go along with some people we have here in the boat that are all ready to go fishing. It'll only cost you $15 for a nice day's fishing on the ocean. Why not, Bill? For 15 bucks? Oh, no. Oh, why not, Bill? You'd love it. Come on. When you get a big fish, I'll take your picture. Come on. We might never get another chance. We? You mean you want to go along? Why not? Well, it might be rough out there. Well, I'm game if you are. If I am? Okay, Grandma, you ask for it. Ah. All right, Captain, you got yourself a couple of customers. Okay, folks, let's go. Sure thing. No, that's not so bad. Sure could do us a lot of good, too. When you go out after customers, you have to know what people want, know their buying habits. Outside of brand identification and convenience of location, surveys prove that two things start motors trading regularly at a particular station. One out of every three motors said that friendship for the dealer or the friendliness of his employees was the reason for his choice. Get acquainted. Friendship's important in getting new customers. But surveys also show there's a competitive factor even more important. That is service. Customers know what they want. Suppose you were in the driver's seat instead of the customer, and the other boys were serving you. You have wanted your windshield cleaned, of course, but in more than 20,000 service checks, in over 1,000 stations, 26% of the drivers who said they wanted this service were not given it. Of all the motorists who said they wanted the radiator water checked, only 68 out of 100 got this service. Of all the motorists who said they thought an oil check was important, only 50% actually received this service. That's a lost opportunity on every other car. The same with battery and tire checks. The services given on the average were all far less than what motorists wanted or considered important. So when you start out after new customers, you want to be sure that your service is really competitive, the kind of service you'd want yourself. And that includes good housekeeping clean restrooms, a neat, clean personal appearance of everyone in the station. Let's not kid ourselves. Competition's doing a good job on all these things. Well, I know we can do better on service and all that, but we're losing a lot of customers on account of price. There's Shell and Gulf dealers down the street here selling lower than we are. Sure, I know. But price is the dealer's own problem. Your boss has a different slant on it than your competitors do. But they're getting business, and you've been losing it. Look here. For the last six months, you've dropped on the average of close to 4,000 gallons a month, below the same months a year ago. And even that was down from the year before. Well, let's see. At our margin, that's a loss of about $240 a month gross. That's right. But suppose we did meet their price. We'd have to get back a lot more than 4,000 gallons a month, wouldn't we, to come out the same? Just in gasoline, yes. But that kind of figuring is what misleads a lot of dealers. What's your average sale of gasoline? Oh, I don't really know. Well, let's say eight gallons, just for a round figure. Now, eight into 4,000 goes 500 times, right? Sure. So when you drop 4,000 gallons in a month, what you've actually done is lose 500 customer contacts. 500 times a car that should have been at your island just isn't there.
and with it disappear all the sales opportunities that every car at your island represents. That 4,000 gallons of gasoline that you didn't sell and your competitors did sell represents perhaps 60,000 miles of driving, which would call for 60 lubrication jobs, at least 30 oil changes, two sets of tires and batteries, spark plugs, transmission fluid, and any number of other possible products and services. In other words, it isn't just 4,000 gallons of gasoline you're losing, though that's bad enough. It's 500 chances to make additional profit, 500 opportunities to win confidence and repeat business. I wish the boss figured it that way. I'd like to give these guys some real competition. Hold it. Well, smile. There, now the judge will have to believe you caught it. starting for home in just a few minutes. Sorry you had to keep dinner waiting so long, but I wanted to get a letter off to the boss and tell him about the campaign and see what he says. What? No, it doesn't take that long just to write a letter, but the customers kept coming in and... Well, of course I could have turned the lights off, but I was kind of curious. I've got an idea that we're losing a good bit of business by closing at night. Of course it's not my loss. Well, I still, I want to make a good, good showing while the boss is out of town. All right. All right. I'm coming. getting on with all those dark-eyed senoritas. <laughs> they should see you. Sure hope you're having a good rest. Things were a little slow the first few days after you left, so I decided to stir up a little action. First, I ran an ad in the Town Herald. Ha! Newspaper ad. Waste of money. They gave us a special price on a half page. A half page? Is he nuts? Well, here it is. Oh, look. Why, that's real nice. Get acquainted special. Get acquainted? 25 years in one place and we have to get acquainted. Oh, William Jackson, you don't even know what goes on in town. Why, every time I go shopping, I meet dozens of women I've never even seen before. And they all drive cars. Okay, okay. Why, there are six new families right on our own block and we don't even know one of them. Oh, no, we can't do it. What? cut our regular prices like that. What's the matter with it? Well, you should be glad that Fred has gumption enough to go out and drum up some business. Mary, look, if we start cutting prices, our customers will be looking for lower prices all the time. Oh, nonsense. Almost every store in town has some kind of a sale on most all the time. Why, look at the chain stores and the supermarkets and the drug stores. How do you think I'd ever stay inside my budget for the house if I didn't shop around a lot? Oh, that's different. They just put on those sales to get you in there. Then they sell you a lot of stuff that isn't on sale. Well, you could do with a few more customers yourself. You're always complaining. You know, I think this is a good idea. I'd go for a bargain like that. And I bet a lot of other folks would, too. Okay, okay, suppose they do. Suppose they come crowding in, droves of them. 
who's going to do all those lubrication jobs and wash jobs and checking up on everything. You've got three men. Well, who's going to handle the driveways while everybody's lubricating and washing and delivering cars? Oh, for goodness sake, you'd think Fred had committed a crime. This will be the first time that a lot of new folks in town have ever heard of Jackson Service Station. Well, do you want to hear what else he has to say or don't you? Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, he says, you know, I think it would be a swell idea if we could meet competition with our gas prices. But I don't want to do anything until I hear from you. Well, he'll hear from me, all right. I'll go and get it off my chest right now before the mail goes. Cut gas prices. Huh. Bill. Yeah? Here, while you're writing, send him this. It's a snapshot of you and the fish. And Bill, don't forget to ask about his wife. Okay. You're taking it easy. We've been busier than one-armed paper hangers. The spring changeover ad I put in the Herald kind of started things going. It began to get us all pepped up, even before it came out. We kind of felt we'd stuck our necks out and had to be on our toes. Charlie Bruckman got us some strings of pennants, and we really decorated the place up pretty nice. We had the spring changeover ad display in the window, and we used most of the stuff you ordered before you left to build up displays around the lube bay and along the fence. We had the paper print us up a bunch of handouts that we could use in the station and around the neighborhood. Now look, fellas, we'll hand one of these to every customer. And don't forget, each new customer we try to sell the spring changeover to, we're trying to turn into a regular at the same time. So we've got to give them better service than they're getting now no matter where they trade. Good afternoon, sir. Swell day, isn't it? Good afternoon. Beautiful day. Good afternoon, ma'am. Glad to see you. We're going to do every windshield. Show each customer how careful we are to give him a perfect job. And we're going to solicit a full tank of SO Extra from everyone. Fill it up with SO Extra, sir? Yes, please. And don't forget the rear window while you're at the back of the car. Be sure to take a look at the tires, too. We're going to check everything. Take nothing for granted. And at least while this special's on, we'll make a test on every battery when we check it for water level. Show people that we're in the battery business and know what we're doing. And let's use a whisk room whenever we get a chance. It's a little extra service customers like, and a good way to get a look at the oil change sticker and speedometer reading. I gave the fellas a real going over on order of service and then made them solicit every customer for a spring checkup special. They weren't too good at first, but after a few flubs, they did all right. Yes, ma'am. Now's the time to have your car put in shape for spring and summer driving. And we'll give you one-stop service. Everything you need at one price. You see, we go by the chart for your own car. So we lubricate every point with exactly the right oil or grease. That includes the transmission and differential, draining the oil and refilling with new Uniflow, washing the car and flushing the radiator. A complete changeover for summer driving. This is the whole list of what we do. It's a real bargain. Suppose I come over and pick up the car. We'll service it and bring it back. When the boys did sell the deal, they were really proud of it. It was a new experience to be really selling something. We got more cars for checkup and lubrication 
than we could handle in regular hours. We had to work late. So I decided to take on another man at least temporarily. Got a fellow that worked in a service station before the war and did mechanics work in the army. He took the job on a temporary basis. So, of course, if you don't want to keep him, you can let him go when you get when back. You get back. Hey, you see? They bit off more than they could chew. Just like I told you. Just hire another man. Where's the profit in that? Well, it sounds very sensible to me. With another man, you won't have to work so hard yourself when we get home. And you can take in more work and make more money. Nah. Uh, uh. Is that all he says? Oh, he goes ahead beefing about the price. Was hoping you'd let us go ahead. Getting some kicks lately from customers that have been trading with other stations. Well, you can't satisfy everybody. Even Judge B What? Gracious, what's the matter? He says, I saw Judge Bailey go into the Shell station yesterday. Why, that old skin flint. Why, he's one of your oldest customers. Do you mean to tell me after all these years for a couple of pennies? Well, you can't blame anybody for wanting to save money. Bill. Why should you have to get higher prices than anyone else? I'm not getting higher prices. They are cutting prices. Well, what's the difference? Look, my customers never kick about prices. I don't kick either when I'm overcharged. I just go someplace else. Overcharged? Look, don't you care anything about service? Of course I do. But sometimes the stores that have the lowest prices often have the best service, too. That's how they keep their customers and make so much money. No. Oh. oh, now, don't get all worked up again. You'll be home next Friday, and you can take care of everything when you get there. I'll take care of everything right now. I'll show that old double foster. When's Bill gonna get back? Friday. Just got a wire from him. Kinda miss him. Like to take him out fishing. Makes him mad when I get a good one. <laughs> What's the idea of keeping open so late? Well, good business. A lot of people come in at night. The oil's okay, Judge. Say, you notice the difference in the engine since we put in the Uniflow? Well, runs all right. Don't notice too much difference. Maybe your spark needs adjusting. Spark? What for? Well, your spark was probably set at the factory to prevent knocking on average gasoline. But that cuts down your power. Now that you're using SO Extra and Uniflow, you've got the top power combination that you can buy. And you can set your timing for maximum power. Might as well get what you pay for. We've got special equipment to do the job. Just takes a few minutes. How about running the car over to the lube bay and let Ray take a look? Well... Okay. All right. Okay, Judge, I put her up a few points. Be a big difference now. Take her out and try it. If she doesn't run better, let us know, huh? I'll let you know darn quick if she doesn't run better. How do you like that, boss? Nice publicity, huh? Yeah. Say, that's all right. <laughs> that's good. Not bad at all. Ray? Boss, I'd like you to meet Ray. Ray Hilton? Ray, meet the boss. Glad to meet you, sir. I'm here kind of temporary, I guess. Well, we'll see about that. Nice to meet you. Excuse me. Sure. Here's the record since you left, boss. The daily, total, and average. Since we posted new prices, we're noticing the difference already. Say, that's swell. Excuse me, boss. Sure. Good work. Hey, 
Welcome back, Bill. Good to see you. Hello, Charlie. Boy, it's great to be back. What do you think of that record? It looks like the boys have been doing a job here. Yep, they've gone right after it. I haven't hardly seen a customer I recognize yet. I feel almost like a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. There's one customer I know, but good. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Gonna have some fun. Wait till he sees this. <laughs> Yes, sir. Want something? I want... What the... Bill! <laughs> Welcome home, you old scoundrel. Good to see you back. Sure is nice to be here. <laughs> hey, you seen the news today? So I can't catch anything bigger than a minnow, huh? That you? Sure is. What a fake. Darn good camera trick, though. Makes it look almost real. Almost real? Huh. I'd like to see you hooked onto that thing. Go up with SO Extra, Judge. Okay, Brad. Well, it's okay, Judge. Right in the line. Have you met Ray, Judge? Ray Hilton? Sure. Ray fixed up the old bus so she runs like new. A little more pep, huh, Judge? You bet. Ray is going to be with us right along now. Thanks, Mr. Jackson. Okay, boy. More help, you know. Gives me a little more spare time. Say, uh, remember that committee job we were talking about before I left? Happen to know if they uh, still need someone? Fellow really ought to help out if he can. Well, that's the story. A tiny part of the story of a businessman whose horizon is beginning to expand. In this fast-growing business, so important to the economy of our land, no one can foresee how far the horizons of tomorrow may reach. But the greatest opportunities of all are within the reach of aggressive, independent ESSO dealers. Businessmen who accept the challenge of competition. A challenge that opens the door to opportunity unlimited. <laughs>